Hi, everyone. Welcome to Free Bird Spirit YouTube channel. Thank, thank you for swinging by and hanging out with us for more conversation. Uh, this, I believe, Chris, is our ninth conversation. Is it really our ninth? Yeah. Right? It? It's the ninth. Is it the ninth? Well, you know, you get the number. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, Let's keep the conversation going and through these awakenings and um, wisdom behind the awakenings, discussion nine. Welcome. Today we're talking about uh, denial. <laughs> and the reason I pause is because I, it, it is such a great tool, but it also can be so devastating um, to our path. And our awakening it can it can really oppress our journey um, of awakenings. Uh, denial can, and there's many layers to this. We have simple denials that you know, um, to all the way up to huge denials, right? So, but it's on a daily, and we've gotten so good with this tool that it can be unconsciously, like subconsciously, that we're that we are maneuvering in this denial and this denial states. So it's almost like, are we, I want to, I want to live more here and present. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I really want to look at this. I want to, what am I in denial about? What do I deny on a daily um, and, and so forth? And I know that it really creates some, we, we have this, we we have this innate need to be comfortable and so um i do know that the, we will kind of do this denial of that that's even happening whether it's even happening in the world or if we don't want to bring that into our reality we'll keep something we don't want to know because we we have this innate need to be comfortable right be safe and comfortable uh, so, but again, many layers, and what are we denying? So, Chris, um, in regards to this subject, do you have anything to start us off with with this? Or... <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're like, don't Let's put it in the time to me. <laughs> I, all I kept thinking was all the D words denial, distraction, destruction. Um, you know, and then I and then my next thought went to denial is one of the key features of alcoholism. You know, and so I was dealing, thinking about my dad and his struggles and how that works, and and um, and I was also thinking about what you had gone through after Ben died about you know trying to trying to live in that reality, but at the same time wanting to make it go away. You know, yes. That, I feel I I want it to go away. It this hurts too much. Make it go away, and um and then I'm thinking about the word denial when it comes to what we've talked about about cancer and and uh, it so interrupts your ability to deny. You know, like, like oh, they, right, right. So here that they, they take a a blood they take blood tests all the time. And the blood test for ovarian cancer is called CA-125. No, it's not the same for all the different cancers. It's different blood tests. But this neighbor who I was telling you about, who I've connected with, who is dealing with uh, later stages than I am, you know, one of the things we talked about was that you, you know, somebody says to you, oh, your numbers are good now. So then you go into that state of denial. Mm -hmm. Oh, Maybe it's gone. And then something rears its little head and you're like, oh, it's not gone. Okay. So, you know, and then there's then there's all this stuff that you go through about, well, maybe the cancer really is gone. Maybe it's just the chemo that's harmful. You know, so you start going through this dance, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's a I think denial is one of those dances we do to try and get away from things that are really uncomfortable. Because and, uh, it's really hard for us to be uncomfortable. <laughs> we don't well, want to. Yeah. I, I mean, it hurts. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. you know, certainly there are some people who live with discomfort most of their lives, all of their lives. 
some people who choose a lifestyle, I keep thinking of Donald Trump, you know, choosing a lifestyle that's so destructive and he's not comfortable. You can tell he's not comfortable, mm -hmm. but you know, it's that sort of stuff. And then there's people who are born, born differently abled, always uncomfortable. You know, th there's, there's all levels of discomfort. There's another D word, discomfort, denial, distraction. Right. A lot of, yeah. And the distraction. Uh, th that is an amazing word with this. Uh, the distraction, the denial, the discomfort, um, the different. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we could talk about the immigrant thing for a few minutes. Yeah. Because yeah. it's really, really bothering me. The, the thing that, you know, really spurred us into this conversation is what's happening right now. And it, it seems to... <laughs> it you know, it encourages, it gives us an opportunity to move into an area that we wanted to talk about anyways, <clears throat> but then it's right there. Hold on. <laughs> it's really, I'm at my, for those of you who can tell that my background is a little different, uh, this uh, discussion, I'm at my daughter's house in New Mexico, uh, um, right outside Taos. So, um, uh, it's very dry here, <laughs> and so I got to keep hydrated. Well, you, while you recover, I'll say a couple words. But uh, the the immigration issue has me very worked up, um, and partly because you're bringing up words that I think describe, you know, the sort of situation. But catastrophic. Live well, catastrophic. Yes, it is catastrophic. <laughs> You know, one of the things that's really important about this immigration issue is, is the level of denial we're in about who is crossing our border. In whenever, I'm trying to remember the year that happened. I'm, not, I'm going to say it wrong, so I don't want to say it. But the president was Polk, P-O-L-K, President Polk. Nobody knows who he is. But he had decided that it would be a good idea for the U.S. to own the Southwest. The Southwest, and you know this better than most, California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, that whole region was Mexico. It was Mexico. It belonged to Mexico. Wow. He said, we want to buy it from you. They said no. So we went to war with the Mexicans to seize that land. This is like Russia invading Ukraine because once they had ownership, you know, you know, they want it back. They want it back. You know, that kind of, you know, and the invader comes in and says, no, you can't, you know, we're going to take, we're going to take the rest away. You know, that kind of stuff. He was a, he was a one-term president for anybody who yeah. wants to know, 18, yeah. 1845 to 1849. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about people crossing the border, it's to understand that indigenous people didn't understand borders. This is a this is a this is a an Anglo kind of um, moment here historically. Um, borders were not something that was taken care of. Um, so the concept of border became the issue. But the other part of that was that we watched people coming from the south to the north for safety. And when you actually meet some of the people coming across, these are people are having a terrible struggle. Some of them having walked through multiple countries just to get to safety. Yes, yes. Asking for asylum, trying to protect their children. You know, my daughter's out covering the story of the immigrants coming across the border, and she's with them when they uncover a woman's body under the under the sand having been murdered by a sexual predator and who was there to try and get her child to safety, you know, and we're seeing this, you know, we're, we're, when you go there, when you meet them, these are our neighbors, you know, these aren't the way in which we talk about denial. We so deny that they're human, just like everybody else. And then we've got, and, and, I just have to pause there for a moment with that, Chris. I can't even move on from that. 
I know. Where she uncovers this woman's body. She on, does. On, she was on the, there well, reporting. I mean, she yeah. was there reporting. On the American side, correct? No, on the Mexican it side. It was still on the Mexican side. Okay. Yeah, but one of the problems, because I went on a number of delegations to northern Mexico, and one of the issues was what's called femicide. And there were a whole lot of Mexican women who were marching, holding pink crosses. And they've got had little pins with pink crosses and i had taken students and um we went to this church and we studied and we heard their stories the stories are unbelievably horrible and what it is is what people don't pay attention to this is the denial this is we make it a simplistic kind of story like you know drug addicts and rapists are walking across the rapists aren't the ones coming from mexico Sexual predators from the U.S. know that they can get away with it that's, across the border and do it with impunity. That's so what, that's where that, I was going with that. Okay, mm -hmm. and so that's yeah, and that's the you know, and listening to their stories, I mean, it was it you you transform. You you can never be the same because the we call it this denial, but I think the other word is distraction. And I, I think I mentioned this in one of the earlier videos about, you know, the powerful will always find ways to derail you. There's another D word, Deal distraction and derail you. Derail. And so yeah. you might be making progress. You might be building numbers to sort of fight against um, the, the Roe versus Wade over, being overturned. You might be building numbers against racism. You might be building numbers against, um, uh, what's, what's the other one? <laughs> I just went blank myself. <laughs> you're pulling at me you're, you're absolutely pulling yes me. all of those <laughs> you might be making progress on all these different things but um but they're going to find a way and that's what they're doing so governor desantis and governor abbott trip on this thing and they're like oh let's send the immigrants to other cities totally ignoring the fact that most of the cities they're sending them to already have huge immigrant populations. New York City, are you kidding? Washington, D.C., the percentages are ridiculous. It's, these aren't, these aren't, I mean, they're sending them there. They already have them. So, you know, it's like, what's your point? You know, we're all dealing with the issues of this planet that have to do with probably the greatest struggle that we have we talk about it all the time, leading with love. It's right in your, you yeah. know, the stuff you do. And everything that you and the others are doing around these channels is so powerful and so good. But we're not telling the other parts of the stories. We're not talking about the stuff we've witnessed. We're not talking about um, the conditions under which these people are being harmed. You know, when I say children in Guatemala are making wedding gowns, you know, that's like a soundbite. You know, what's the lived reality of that? Right. So you know, did they lock the door on the factory where where uh, Guatemalan children were working because there was a fire and they wanted to finish their production and many of them were killed? Did they, t I had one of the students in my class in 2019 her family members were in that building she was from guatemala you know these are the stories we're not telling because we're going out and doing things like what i mentioned to you before we're buying fruit of the loom t-shirts which are being made by mexican women on the border living in uh, squalor because there's no place to live there's no infrastructure and they've got carpal tunnel so bad they can't lift their arms and no they're in their 20s and they're in their 20s and early 30s and i i just want to pause right here chris because i i want everybody to know that this isn't just a story that we've heard and we're passing along chris went there you went there you visited you saw you talked to these women you you uh -huh. were a part of and so those of us who hear this story and um, it's probably a little easier to go into distraction or denial and um, mm -hmm. and as we're at the store and we're like, but the fruit of the loom, you can get 10 t-shirts 
for five dollars cheaper than just two t-shirts i you know what i mean so um it's there's uh, so um we're, we're faced with this now so it becomes our responsibility so now that we know this this story through you who if it had experienced it and saw it we have a responsibility now on what to do with it like are we going to use our tool of denial or and or are we going to do something about it and not buy that product any longer and um so ask i feel like uh, to the family listening and 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 to myself and i know chris you said i don't buy for the loom anymore right we don't right and so what do we do with that and what what do I, what am i going to do with that well i can tell you right now i will never purposely buy for the loom because now i know and i choose not to put it in a category oh well it doesn't affect me it's far away no we're all connected yeah but you know it's way bigger than that i know i'm yeah, just bringing it i want to make sure that that gets driven home that that's, uh, we will go way. back there but i'm just that, that a treaty that made that all possible all of the the businesses on the border that were doing all these hideous things were all american they were all american businesses we are creating the immigration crisis with the level of consumerism and commodification we're doing. We are creating that. We are each accountable and responsible for that. Children playing in toxic waste dumps that are produced by Dow Chemical who can't do that here, but they'll go do it there. Right. Since they, make, because we have the regulations here and they can't do their little right. toxic chemical stuff. They'll go right. right across the border and do it there. And right. then have these, and then they also can pay these ridiculous um not living wages at all. Right. right. Where they the families are living in the toxic right. dumps and building their homes in the toxic dumps out of the toxic dump stuff. Mm -hmm. This is real, like this is real. And so, and it's um um like you said, um the United States is creating mm -hmm. the problem. The, the well, we, it's a global economy, right? It's a global economy. So we're not the only ones doing this. You know, all of the Western nations are participating in this. China's participating in this. You know, what's going on in, in parts of Asia? I mean, it's there's a global phenomenon that comes out of... Uh, I don't want to say capitalism because I think it's too simplistic. It, it's really coming out of a, a, a sort of global economy that is an agreement among nations and those powerful within those nations to to produce goods at the lowest price, paying people the least amount, not caring about abusing them. The real crisis, I think, is what we where we started talking about this. How can we talk about love when we treat it like it's romance? You know, we talk about love like you know live in love and you know i do it you do it everybody you know we try and we try to live that way and but living in love is also about being accountable being conscious yeah awake 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 and, and, and asking questions not the just greed. Saying, beware of the greed you know not just saying i'm going to boycott this that and the other thing that's a band-aid and it doesn't always reap. But there was an article in the New York Times today about how they uncovered, oh no, it's New York Times, Washington Post, I think. Um, they uncovered the way in which Russia tried to divide the women who were marching um, in 2016, the big, that massive women's march, mm -hmm. Trump and the position he was on, and um, how Russia inter actively interfered by sending false things to the organizers to get them to um, break up, you know, to not get along. You know, these are, it's time to be awake to how power works. And it works in your personal relationships. It works in massive relationships. 
And there are a lot of people out there. You know, the only reason I got to go to Mexico is because someone like Marta Ojeda, who is um, a labor organizer, um, joined up with Maureen Casey, who was working for the New York State Labor and Religion Coalition. And they all said, let's go witness. And this is an old practice that happened I'm trying to remember when it was I think it was during Vietnam there's this witness for peace these were people who said enough is enough we need to go tell find out what the truth is so they were going to those places so that got reactivated around Nicaragua when that struggle was going on and so a number of people from the United States went to Nicaragua to stand on the border between them and um what was it who was fighting um El Salvador so they were they were they were witnessing and nonviolently witnessing so you know fast forward to you know more recently new york state labor religion says let's re let's reinvigorate that let's go and do that so that's what we were doing we were taking students and um you know it i i believe that most of the ones we took were changed permanently you know, they were at one point when we got back to campus, um, they took their, they made their own pink rough crosses and they were out on the street protesting and, um, you know, but they were awake, right? And yeah, then we went could, and listened to- They were shaken, yeah. they were shook awake or shaken yeah, awake, right? Very, yeah, yeah, they were. And, and you, you know, I've got photographs of them standing on the border you know, when the priest is doing the Day of the Dead ceremony and they're just, they just look devastated. But, excuse me, yeah, it changed all of us. I mean, it changed all of us. But I want to go back to where you started from, which is the way in which our denial works. Sometimes it's healthy because it keeps right. you from, you know, I mean, if you pay attention to all of it, you know, you'll do yourself in. But, um so denial comes in handy at times. But I think what's more important is, and what makes you feel better, I used to say this all the time, how blessed I was that I got to teach. Because if the people around me weren't teaching, and we were watching all this stuff happening, but they had no outlet. Mm -hmm. and I got to go tell the stories. Right. And tell people think better about it. So that was nice. But um, I think the vast majority of us don't have that as an option. So what can we do? Mm -hmm. And I think I said this way back when we did one or two, just show up. But you got to pay attention to how this stuff works. And if you're going to get hooked by this immigration thing, you're doing exactly what they want. They want, they are trying to make this the dominant issue for the 2022 election so that the Democrats don't take over. They're trying to shift the debate toward immigration, and they're trying to blame Biden for the immigration, and it's not. We're all to blame for the immigration. We are all participating in a global economy that allows some people to be harmed seriously and some to make a lot of money. So, you know, as long as we're allowing that to happen, we're not going to pay attention to the stuff we were caring about reproductive rights and the lgbt stuff and the um um <laughs> now i'm doing a version of what you did you know, the, i always forget the third one it's like what's the third one the lgbt rights roe versus wade racism okay racism yeah, it's the yep. Holy Trinity. yeah yeah so yeah so they're gonna do it that's what they do and it's distraction and it, um However, for me, um, it, it's just added into the, the loop of everything, right? Um, because now, um, now I have four things, not just the three, <laughs> you know? But yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. And they want to make, you're absolutely right about that. So let's not be just totally distracted. However, um, it does bring, um, it does give us an opportunity to be, become um, more aware and awake to yeah. what's happening. Yeah. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, and change the narrative back to what Trumpers are trying to put it. it you, you know, all the people crossing the border are drug addicts and rapists. No, people, we're the drug addicts and rapists <laughs> hurting yeah. them. We're, who wants, buying you know buying we're the, the drug drugs. addicts that yeah. are, you know, we need the drugs yeah. here and they're yeah. whatever. And so, yeah, so it's the whole uh, maddening. Yeah, well, I used However, to say um, it just does um, connect into this denial and destruction. What do we do? Um, and like you, you did, you did um, point out that, um, yeah, denial is a great tool and it's, it's needed. And, um, but are we abusing it and how are we abusing it um, in our own lives? What do we, because it, it becomes it's such a great tool and we're so used to using it. It becomes subconscious when we do. And so just be aware of what are we denying? What are we, what are we stepping into denial about? And again, it can be really small, but when you do that and, you know, I'm reminded um, you, I think you touched on this about um, uh, alcoholism and the piece of denial so people uh started you know drinking because it helped them step into that state of denial where they didn't have to feel or think about whatever it was um that they are trying to escape right um but then it it, it some people can't do that and they just it, it becomes an alcoholism type of situation um to and you miss out on life right yeah. because you're in the state of denial all the time that you miss out on you're numb you're numb, numb. you're numbing that's another extension of denial you're right numbing. so what what are what are we numbing from yeah on a daily what let's take inventory let's look um well it's and, hard I mean, look at all of, how many of us are saying we can't watch the news right no. that's and, a form of denial but it's okay because you're keeping yourself <laughs> well <laughs> you know it, I, I live in that reality where you know everything you read says stress is the main cause of cancer so i'm sort of going okay i need to be mindful of that right so let's be mindful of that and and then um and then i'm teaching i mean i'm a sociologist and i'm you know i, I want kids to get i want them to get the stuff and so I have to sort of watch it a little bit. And then when I tune into your channel and others, the stuff that people are pouring in is all about this stuff, you know, all about uh, the Trump era and how much destruction it created and, um, and trying to find a, something to hold on to say, there's going to be something positive. Eventually it's going to be something positive. Right. And, and so we're, we're buffering it right with those efforts but it doesn't take it away and so how do you cope right you, how do you how do you deal with that and and i hear various things i hear things about you know maybe if you're if you meditate a lot you'll forget about all this you know it's like that's not the purpose of meditation right. it's, you know it, it, there there are ways to but um but i think i think what's really helpful is knowing that um that these efforts are really designed. They're not random. The mm. invasions are not random. This is designed. These are powerful people playing with us. Yes. Just, you know, interfering in the internet, in social media, in invading countries, in busing immigrants. These are very powerful, wealthy interests trying to claim this world for them mm -hmm. you know keep in mind that 80 percent of the world's wealth world's wealth is held by 20 percent of the people mm -hmm. so i had a friend recently say to me this planet's overpopulated it is not that's part of the conspiracy theory there's plenty of places to live there's plenty of food there's plenty of everything but it's hoarded mm -hmm. and it's hoarded by a very small population so 
It's all by design. And when you realize that, then you start retargeting your efforts to that mm -hmm. and not to living in fear. Instead, and it's what we talked about. I think we talked about it last time too, when I was telling that story about the students saying, we come and talk to this guy when, uh, who one of our one of our friends because he you know you get it you're yeah. gonna ask him questions and he's like yeah so that's the thing right instead of, it goes right back to what we talked about with our race get our eyes off the targets and onto the origins onto where the power is now that is a powerful okay. message I want you to repeat that message over again. That's a powerful message. Get off, get your sights off the. What say that again? Well, what we that's another D word. We defend, right? I'm going to defend the immigrants. I'm going to defend people of color. I'm going to defend gay people. And you know, we get caught in that trap. That's not the place to live. The place to live is in pressuring and holding accountable the people who are getting in the way yes. of that kind of world where we all live peacefully and they're hoarding. I mean, they're basic hoarders, right? So right. nobody needs, you know, what was it Kim said, I think, who needs eight bedrooms? You know, it's like, what are we doing? You know, and the guy, oh, Patagonia, talk about him. Did you see that? Who? The guy who owns Patagonia. The oh. guy who owns Patagonia just gave all of his money to the environment he's not going to leave any of it to his kids he's 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 one of the founders of the social responsibility and business movement you know i talked about that before mm -hmm. anita roddick who was a friend of mine and um he and ben and jerry's and those folks they were out protesting against the world trade organization doing all that work right and so he anita did a version of that but patagonia just gave his business away to the environment to work on the environment and so it's a model you know it's like these are people who say and there was one there's a guy in massachusetts who owned one of the companies that made fleece stuff can't remember his name and there was a big fire and so the factory was, was harmed and people were out of jobs he said i'm going to pay him anyway while we rebuild and he refused to have a big house. He, they, he and his partner lived in a smaller house. You know, it was enough for the two of them. Didn't use extra profits to sort of just get richer and richer and richer. And um, he eventually reopened and people never lost their pay. Wow. You know, that was the social responsibility and business movement. And that was very much uh, the 90s, really. Maybe primarily the 90s. But they were doing extraordinary things. They were figuring it out. Yes, I can, you know, need to figure that out with the body shop. You know, she actually had 12,000 employees, 52 store, you know, in 52 countries and did extraordinary things in the world. And six months out of the year would take employees with her to places like in Africa where they made the, the stuff for cocoa butter and, um, and, to help them get the tools to make it for themselves so there was no middle person and they could build schools and that sort of thing so she was always doing that and so was ben and jerry and so was patagonia and so was a whole variety of people who are it would be nice if other people would take that on uh big corporations and take yeah. that model on and, and and follow suit yeah that but was the enron that was the enron era Remember that? Enron, Enron yes era, right that was the Enron era it's like okay you know some businesses are just bad you know so they put a lot of pressure on business for a while but it needs to come back it needs to come back yeah yeah I'm not in denial now uh, um <laughs> but it's catastrophic <laughs> Yes, it's catastrophic. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> going but back I also to, say, I also want to say that it's important, and you can swallow for a minute. Um, thank you. It's really important to not get caught in the negative, to not just see the hard stuff, because there are a lot of people doing a lot of really good work. I wish the media would change its tune 
from if it bleeds it leads to you know having a more balanced outcome but you know as long as we consume it you know it's gonna keep doing it yeah we don't have to stay in that place of mm -hmm. of the negative and in in the horrific part of it of course not we're not meant to do that we, we couldn't handle that <laughs> but um we're also, uh, I feel like we have a responsibility. Um, too much is given, much is required, right? Um, and so we have a responsibility to to what we what we know. So what is it that we can do? Um, and again, something that some denial things is okay, <laughs> but there are um, spaces of denial that aren't okay. Does your denial hurt someone else? And that's the first question you want to ask yourself. Does my denial of whatever situation, does it hurt someone else? And if that's a yes, then there, there must be, there, there's a, something that needs to change there. So I know that, I know now that Fruit of Loom um, has horrific um, practices in regards to how they make their garments. I know that now. And I choose not to be in denial about that. And what I can do about that is make others aware. And also I uh, not buy fruit of them. Right? That's what we can do with that. So um you know what are those things? What is happening? Um keep telling the stories of the women who are crossing the border to find to, to get into safety mm -hmm. but risking literally their um their lives to do it in a horrific way too it's i mean it's not like they're crossing the border and they, someone shoots them no they're horrifically assaulted and then murdered um yeah. and this if you want to know more about that um please do some research because it is, uh, and they do have some documentaries on it as well. So um, find those and, and, yeah. and learn about that. And um, yeah, keep the conversation going, but you don't have to sit in the energy all the time. And yes, yeah. if it, if it riles you up, get riled up. If that's good, you should be riled up. Well, the, the best thing to do is to do something for somebody. You know, you see some darkness like that, don't hold it. Go and do something for somebody. You know, walk a dog, take care of somebody, build something, you know, feed someone, you know, go to a food bank. Shift. There's all sorts of things you can do. Shift that energy. Shift it. Just, just don't stay with that energy, but show up, you yeah. know, and then say to yourself, whenever you're shopping, where did this come from and under what conditions? And is this okay? Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to also say that you can't always just boycott like that because it's so massive. Right. It's really massive. It is massive. The worst cases we saw were people making steering wheel covers mm. for automobiles where we met a child who had hydrocephaly so bad as head was this big parents didn't have health insurance the company where she was gluing the steering wheel covers on didn't give them any protective gear and the water they were drinking was runoff water from the dumps so you know these were american canadian german uh corporations uh subcontracting out the labor to make parts for cars you're not going to stop buying cars, right? right? So what are you going to do? You know, you can ask, make somebody aware. Where was this made? How was this made? Under what conditions? Write a letter. Writing letters is amazing because these companies pay attention to letters. If somebody took the time to actually write a letter, then it must be a big deal. You know, we used to call those in the airlines, we used to call them irates. <laughs> but, you know, that's it's it's what makes them work so mm -hmm. yeah yeah i uh, 
I was venting with you earlier about the student loan situation and that, mm -hmm. you know, what people don't realize is that the student loan situation is one of those cases where politicians passed laws that allowed them to charge, to capitalize interest on student loans while saying to the students, to the former students, it, we can give you an income sensitive plan. And what you don't realize when it's happening is that that's actually building the interest so that, you know, I borrowed 70,000, I've paid back 145,000. They're telling me I still owe 227,000 because of capitalized interest. The part that the media plays is how upset people are in the debate and why don't you pay my bills? It's like, it's not that. We've allowed these politicians and these banks to make a huge amount of money. And then we want to bet, bet blame colleges. Colleges are nonprofits. So what are we blaming them for? The, they're passing costs on that are given to them. And then I find out that in New York State, it's a state, these are state schools. Only 26% of what somebody pays in tuition goes back to the school. Yeah. The rest of it goes to New York State for them to use whatever way they want. So the special interests get in there. So you're not getting the whole story. That's where the denial comes in. We we say, oh, they're, they're only going to tell us the truth. No, no, they're going to tell you what's been given to them. Right. You know, my daughter's a very powerful and good journalist, and I've been around a lot of journalism schools and and worked with the ledger, and they they get very good teaching about ethics and about writing their stories and observing. But remember what they get access to and remember the socialization that they've had. So what they see is perspective. It's part of what things exactly. are used to seeing. And, mm -hmm. you know, Molly um, just took a job at the Washington Post, which was at the Los Angeles Times. But she went and covered the George, George Floyd protests and she was shot by the police with rubber bullets. So it wasn't made up. It was, they shot her in her legs. She was covering the story. What's going on here? So these are the stories that aren't getting told. Um, and we need to also insist that journalism become more responsible about that. That the media does tell those stories. Does tell the stories about, you know, so when they talk about critical race theory, you know, it's sort of my soapbox here. Talk about critical race theory, you know, say, we stole Mexico. Mm -hmm. So they're just crossing the border, what we <laughs> call the border, in their own land. Right. And that land was stolen from them by the by the resorts all along the border. So the only jobs they had was to migrate north and take it in the same companies we just talked about. So it's, these are the world's great secrets that are just unbelievable. Right. And so uh, staying in the area of not knowing these not knowing all this or not um, wanting to know is a form of denial in itself, right? <laughs> right. Well, yeah, you were talking about it and I was thinking about what a lovely neighborhood I live in, you know, with lots of young families and look at where you are and you're, you know, your daughter and, and your grandchildren. And it's like, you know, we spend our days trying to make their lives happen. Right. We're not yes. sitting around thinking about what's going on at the border. Mm -hmm. You know, they're riding up and down the street on their scooters and then they're, yeah, they're hel with their helmets and, you know, and then there's little gatherings and it's like, everybody's like, oh, it's such a nice world. Yeah. And outside the borders of this world, this stuff's going on. Right. So, yeah, it's, uh, that's denial. It's for a good reason. Yeah. But there's a balance in that. What do we do with that? Yeah. Um, we're responsible for not totally going to sleep on it there's something we can do yeah always with it um so well, what's go the, ahead what's the takeaway yeah the takeaway <laughs> you always end with what's the i takeaway? know the takeaway here and i was just thinking about it as i was pausing there um the takeaway um does your denial hurt someone just mm -hmm. just ask that question and if you don't even know, like, you know, ask if you want to awake, awaken in this and um, not only hurt someone, 
Is it hurting you? Are you missing out on being awake somewhere fully, right? So throw that out. I mean, if, if you are spiritual and you, um, you throw it out to source or God or, and ask these, ask this, where, where am I uh, deny? Where, where am I settling in denial? Where do I, you know, show me these areas, ask, ask your guides to show you and, um, and open doors of awake, awakening, awakening up, <laughs> awakening up. So where the question is, where, where am I, where is my denial hurting others? And where's my denial hurting me? Mm. And what, you know, another thing, I, I think we touched on this a little bit. I know we could go on and on with this, but um, what am I using to distract myself from things when it gets too hard? Is there something even? So blessings to you. I know this subject is kind of, it's kind of a rough one. So yeah, if you're still time. here with us yeah. at the end of this, Good job. And uh, we are wrapping you up and holding space for you um, and hugging you all. Um, this is a rough one because we have to take a look at ourselves and, and things. I, I w really want to say that we're, it's a, it, this is a time on this planet. You know, you've talked about this before too. And it's, this planet is in crisis and it's shifting and we're birthing a new earth and um, it's time for us all to be awake in multiple ways. And I think you use the word consciousness. The developing consciousness is to look at the truth, yeah. find the truth, be in the truth, live peacefully. I mean, you're saying it, not do harm. And we talked about that last time too. It was, it was uh, about how to, how to hold the space for someone, all of that, right? So I want to just reinforce that what you were saying, that the real takeaway is to is to lead with love, yeah. but to know that love is a much bigger topic than just you and me. You know, yes, much bigger thing. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> together, together, we together we rise. Yes, yes. So blessings to you, um, and thank you for again for. Uh, joining this uh, awakening uh, wisdom th through awakening conversation number nine keep the conversation going please uh we in we read every comment um and enjoy that involvement in this discussion so blessings to you all and we will see you all at the next conversation mm -hmm.